Hi, I'm Gary Barnage, former Carolina Panther and Cleveland Brown tight end, and you're plugged in with Jay. Yo, what's good? It's your homeboy T Pain. Right now, at this very exact moment, you plugged in with Jay. Turn up, turn up, turn up. My boy, Jay Perry. You're listening to my boy, Jay the Plug. My boy, Jay the Plug. And you're listening to my boy, Jay the Plug. You're listening to my boy, Jay the Plug. You're listening to my boy, Jay the Plug. Jay the Plug. You got as many winners from anyone. You're listening to my boy, Jay the Plug. Get plugged up, everybody. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome once again to an episode of plugged in with jay i of course am your host jay the plug here with a very special guest what do they like to call you man the barnyard dog barnkowski gary barnage how are you doing man i'm doing good be called so many different things but i'll take whatever people prefer <laughs> do you have a favorite honestly no I, I think growing up i was always called big gary so i think to me that would be a thing because it's since high school and stuff like that so it's just been my nickname since then. I was even called String Bean when I was younger in uh, middle school because I was always big, tall, and skinny. So I've had that one a couple times thrown at me whenever I was younger, man. I was like 6'4 in high school and maybe a buck 80 soaking wet carrying 45 pound plates. It's terrible. See, see, I've also got Jolly Green Giant. I've gotten so many names. So there's a guy at work that says that he always goes ho 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 to me because he, yeah because you're what you're six six two six six right well, right now I'm six six about two sixty five that's a yeah big fella man <laughs> <laughs> all right man well so I always want to start this off with um I'm I'm very I love you know charities and, and uh, you know foundations and things like that that help but uh, you are a co-founder of something I thought was pretty awesome, the American Football Without Barriers. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, American Football Without Barriers started, I want to say, almost 11 years ago now, and it's been going great. We go to a different country every year, so we go overseas, do a free football camp for kids. We visit schools, orphanages, hospitals, and give back. We bring over 15 NFL players and just try and spread the sport of American football overseas because people don't realize – how big the sport is internationally like you might know in some markets but people would never expect they've been playing professional football in finland since the 70s they actually have a finland hall of fame for football people would never know that they have they have women's tackle leagues in germany and in finland it's not just flag they have flag football in egypt and turkey for women so like it's a huge sport it's growing internationally and you don't ever get here about all the teams and stuff unless the nfl's doing something there because that's key market for money so they're obviously going to hype it but it's big everywhere brazil has 30 something teams that play so like we've been to nine countries uh and it's been an amazing trip and the players love it because we take them the experience different things some of them never been out of the country before they get to give back to charity give back to the kids and then we're teaching football to kids that just enjoy it and gives them another sport to play that's great man that, that there are that many teams in brazil that's in, i've never heard that of course because no, it's not a huge popular market for money so people don't talk about it the NFL doesn't go there and stuff like that so it doesn't get the recognition but there's teams all over like when we first went we went to China and and China had six or seven teams playing at that time and then since we've left now they're over 15 20 teams playing so in like a 10 year span they've already doubled what more than doubled what they already have almost tripled the teams that are playing and they watch their games by watching stuff on YouTube that's how they watch the games. They don't even get a chance to watch the stuff live. So they just get to watch highlights and stuff like that. And that's how they learn how to play. And then you have American coaches will go over there and help coach and stuff like that. Cause that's what one of them was a person, person we partnered with in China. Mm -hmm. He was in the military and he lived over in China now. And he was the one who's brought football and trying to bring it and get it big there. And it was yeah. awesome. Wow, man. That's any of y'all out there, y'all hear this, see if you can find it, help out the market. That's, in, that's incredible, man. What, do you know what country y'all are going to next? So we do. We we're, were planning on the Philippines, and it all just depends on what's going on with COVID. COVID throws a wrench in everything because, obviously, it, the logistics, you're gonna, we're going to have 20, 20 to 25 players or people traveling with us, and then you're going to have up to 500 kids and uh, young adults playing football in a tight area and it's obviously outdoors and stuff like that but yeah that's the issue we just got to try and manage and make sure mm -hmm. it's safe for everybody 
Sure, sure, yeah. Always got to make sure it's safe. And I would say one thing I wanted to mention for sure on it is we all we don't do just men's camp. It's also women's camp, too. We do a women's camp. So women have the same opportunity because it's growing internationally for women as well. And it's as you see, they have tackle leagues in the U.S. now. Women are getting the opportunity to play, and they're enjoying it. Even if it's flag football, they're enjoying doing it. So we wanted to incorporate that, and we've been doing that since Turkey. Man, that's – yeah, that's cool. I've seen some of these women's league, man. It, they put it in. Like, they – it, it, They like, have a blast with it. It's like watching uh, women – like, in watching WWE, like, wrestling. You see the women fight. Like, when they wrestle, man, they, they lay it in. So yeah. they get after it, man. They definitely <laughs> – they definitely know how to play the game. It's like old school football. It's insane. Um, so, you were drafted in 2008 – Correct by correct. the Panthers. That is correct. I know for some reason it hit 2018. I'm like, no, that's not correct. <laughs> um, I always want to ask my my guests when you were drafted. What do you remember exactly what you were doing when you were drafted? So I was actually at a like a little small restaurant down the street from my house, and I had my coaches from my high school, and I had some of my friends there, and so I, I wanted them to enjoy that experience because they were a part of the reason why I was where I was. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Man. Yeah. I love hearing those stories because I mean, that's just, it's life altering. It's completely changing. Did you, I've asked a couple of people this before and they, they've said they had no clue. They didn't think they were going to, did you, did you know you were going to be drafted? Did you have that, that feeling that it was going to definitely so, so happen? I knew I was going to be drafted. I just didn't know when, because everything we had heard had any, been as early as third round as late as six. So I knew somewhere in there and I went in the fifth and that's the thing is you just never have any idea. And the thing is, I never did anything with Carolina besides they came to the pro day. That was literally only contact we ever had with Carolina. So I would have had no inkling that Carolina had even interest. Really? They didn't, they didn't keep in touch with you or anything after, after the pro day. They came to pro day and that was it. So it was a complete surprise, which to me was awesome because I grew up a Panther fan because oh, cool. they both came in at the same time. And my parents, like the Jaguars, I live outside of Jacksonville. So, and I'm not, obviously as a kid, I'm not going to go with what my parents like. And plus <laughs> I was a huge Julius Peppers fan. I, I played defensive end in high school. So I tried to model my game after him. Mm -hmm. So he was already on the team. So obviously I'm a huge fan of him. So I'm a fan of the Panthers now because of that. And then I got to go play with him as a teammate and play at the Panthers. So it was a good, it was a great experience. Yeah, absolutely. You got to you got to take passes from Cam Newton, yeah. Yeah, that was later. That was in my last year of my yeah. career there, and before it was, it was Jake to home to start. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That um, so you got picked up by the Browns as a free agent. So yeah. So Chudzinski was the offensive coordinator in Carolina he took the head coaching job at Cleveland right. and I followed him and went with him to Cleveland because I was told I was going to get the opportunity to be like Greg Olson was in Carolina and then I got there and that wasn't the case <laughs> until around 2015 right <laughs> but Ch Chazinski only lasted a year so it was not his doing but right 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 hey the thing is what I took away from that was Hey, you, that's fine. You don't want to bring me here. I'm still going to do what I need to do because I'm still in the field blocking. Yeah. So that year, I was actually the highest rated blocking tight end in the NFL, pass blocking included. I pass blocked 50 times more than any other tight end, and I gave up one pressure the whole season. Man, so they give up no sacks. So, like, I just try to craft my game in something else because I wasn't going to be using a pass game. So, sure. I'm going to focus on what I know I can do. Yeah, absolutely. Focus on the skills that they're allowing you to focus on. So um, it's, you've had a you've had a, a decent career with you know as far as most NFL players go. You know you what eight years, nine years, eight, nine years, eight years active. I got injured one year in Carolina, so right. eight years That's playing, right. nine total. Right, right. So um, I would figure Josh McCown would be probably your favorite quarterback that you. <laughs> that you worked with he was awesome well the thing so the difference is so with josh uh -huh. josh was he was a vet obviously the thing is he just trusts in the players he gave you the opportunity to make the play so jake to home was the same way in carolina with sure. steve smith he's like steve you're gonna make the play i'm gonna throw it whether it's intercepted or not i know i trust you i'm throwing it and that's how Josh's mentality was. So a quarterback like that, you see that with Tom Brady all the time. Tom Brady does that with Gronk. 
Mm-hmm. Like he just yeah. trusts Kronk's going to get it. So whether it's interception or not, he trusts the guy's going to win. And I think that's lost upon a lot of uh, QBs because QBs are worried about making the mistake. Like that was never a Brett Favre's thing. It's mm-hmm. like, go make the play. That's what your job is to do. So I'm going to give you the opportunity. Yeah, you might throw interceptions, but now everybody gets dinged on all that stuff. But that was Josh's thing. Josh didn't care if he threw interceptions. I'm going to allow you to make a play. You make a play, make us right. We're good to go. And I think that's – he had trust in me on a lot of stuff. And that's why he – I was one of his favorite targets because – he, hey, just throw it. I'm going to go get the ball for you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. I think, you, you know, you're at that level for a reason. Give them an opportunity. Just put the ball where it needs to be as close to as possible, and then they're going to mm-hmm. definitely – they're going to use their skills to get it, just like you did, man. I had – in a, I can't – I promised myself I wouldn't bring it up, but, like, I traded for you in 2015 in fantasy football, and you and your buddy, your, your boy, D'Angelo Williams, took me to a championship, man. So I, I <laughs> <laughs> got y'all. Um, so you've Josh McCown. We just got done talking about him. You have worked with so many quarterbacks. Who do you have a favorite? I know we got to get political, and you know they're all great in their own right. But do you have anybody that stands out the most? Honestly, it would probably just be Josh because of that. Obviously, Cam's rookie year, he was amazing, but mm-hmm. I was injured, so I didn't get to play with Cam his rookie year. But he set records as a as a rookie and that and everything. But like I. I was hurt, so I didn't get to actually play with him to see. But uh, I would say Josh, just because of his willingness to trust the players and let them do it, he didn't rely – he wasn't worried about making a mistake. And I think that was a thing. I think all the quarterbacks were good, but obviously I'm going to be a little partial to Josh because of the season I was able to have because he, I was given – the first time I was given the opportunity to, to actually start as a tight end and fully do everything, and that's what happened. And I think that was a lot of, a lot of Mike Pettin and a lot of Josh McCown aspect of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think all of us that were, that were, that had you on their squad in fantasy, man, I think we're all partial to Josh. So thank you, Josh McCown. (laughs) Um, So (laughs) something I've become a pretty big fan of is cinnamon and sugar. The podcast you have with D'Angelo Williams. Yes. I'm, I'm a, it's, I love being able to hear two buddies talk about pretty much anything. And it's entertaining as all hell. So I can't really do it as much justice as you probably could. T- tell us how that started. How did everything? Yeah. So me and D'Angelo talk all the time. We've known each other since I got drafted in Cleveland. We actually knew each other before. I mean, Carolina. We actually knew each other before that, though, because he played at Memphis. I played at Louisville. We played against each other my freshman year, his junior year. And I always give him a hard time because it was my first college touchdown as a freshman and we beat them on a Thursday night nice. and he almost single-handedly beat us, but he fumbled to lose the game for his team. So I always give him a hard time about it. And so we knew each other then we didn't really know each other, but we knew who we, who each other were. Sure. And then I got drafted in Carolina and I found out he had a huge love for wrestling. I had a love for wrestling. So now we had something to bond over and then we just became close friends. So how it came up with the podcast well we were just trying to come up with like we always talk and talk about everything and we we're like well podcasts are something everybody's doing why not do something that's different like every podcast you hear of athletes they're talking about sports well we didn't want to do that we're not sports don't define who we are right. so that is just what our job was like so we wanted to do something different so we're like well, we'll start a podcast and just talk about any and everything nothing's off limits We're going to talk about it. It doesn't matter. It's what we think on things. You don't have to like it. You can agree. You can disagree. We don't, we're not trying to change anybody's opinion. We just want to talk about different things. And in our relationship, we joke on each other a lot. So I think it comes out in the podcast because we really mess with each other and we have different opinions on things. We have same opinions on things. It's just a lot of fun. And we're always just coming up with new things and it's just this great time and the whole thing of cinnamon and sugar obviously it's a little bit of play on race but it's also a little play on cinnamon's really hard to deal with you can't do a cinnamon challenge like you can't do a spoonful it's hard to deal with in large doses you can do a sugar all the time yeah d'angelo is very hard to deal with in large doses you can handle me in large doses i'm a little easier to handle so that's where the cinnamon and sugar play it on well as well because a lot of people don't like how salty d can be and how petty he can be on things and that's because they don't know him. So a lot of it, he's just playing a game and people don't, don't like it, but that's just who he is. He just likes to have fun. And I'm just super laid back, chill. So that's where that comes a little contrast and it's a lot of fun. 
and we play off each other well. Yeah, I can hear it in the podcast, man. It's it's extremely entertaining. Anybody seeing this, go subscribe, go follow, go stream Cinnamon and Sugar podcast. It's it's great. It's a really great show. You've done a lot with D'Angelo Williams. I take it probably one of your best friends, closest friends. You have a YouTube series coming out. I saw on your Instagram this video of <laughs> of you telling me, like it's a bunch of challenges that y'all are going to do. And you Correct. basically called them out on being you being the more um, complete athlete. That is correct. <laughs> I'm a natural athlete. <laughs> right. So obviously, but what, what are some of the challenges that y'all are going to do? So I saw you've got a 40 yard dash that has that, has that dropped? Yeah. So, yeah. So it dropped on Friday. Okay. Uh, it dropped. We're, we're going to drop one every Friday and then uh we're actually going to skip not this Friday, but the, the Friday before Halloween, we're actually going to drop that episode on Halloween. It's going to be a little Halloween special that we'll drop. And then, uh, so it'll be Friday for eight weeks. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun because like we always joke on each other. Hey, well, I'd beat you in this. I'd beat you in that. We've only ever played each other in football or you Uno and stuff like that. And we were teammates on the amazing race. So like we were together, but we like to compete. So this gives us an opportunity to compete against each other and I always tell him I'm a better athlete than he is. He doesn't like it. He doesn't believe it. So we wanted to put it to the test. And um, so we have, we start off with the 40, which is a lot of fun. And if anybody has seen The Office or any reality show, we try to film, we filmed it in a way like where we're talking and then we cut to action and we come back to what we're talking about and we're cut to action. So you hear like a confessional, like what we're right what we feel is going to happen. And then we give you an after confessional. So it's a lot of fun because I think you're, you're going to see how we play off each other really well and how our relationship and dynamic is. And it's, it's good how we're always competing, but the whole premise of the 40 came because when Tebow got signed by the Jaguars for training camp, I said, I will, I bet I'm just as fast as Tebow because Tebow's fastest 40 he ever ran was a four, eight. Mm-hmm. Well, my fastest was a four, five, seven. I haven't played in four years, but I could still probably beat Tebow was my saying. He's like, there's no way Tebow's an athlete. I'm like, the fastest he ever ran was a four. I said, I will run eight somewhere in the four nine right now. And I haven't lifted a weight in four years. And that plays into my natural athlete aspect. I don't, you don't lose it. So that's where the first challenge came from. Cause he doesn't think I can do it. I know I can do it. So it's very entertaining. Uh, only spoiler I'll give you is, Things changed on the fly when we were supposed to run it. So ah. that's all. I, and so you have to watch and see why okay. things changed and everything. And you'll see. It's a good time. It's a good time, though. I can't wait to check it out, man. I saw I saw on your uh, the post on it. Uh, I'm going to make sure to check it out. And I'll make sure to copy the link down below in the in the comment section. Or not the comments, but the description. And uh, that way everybody can link in. And, yeah. and I, I want to give a stuff. huge shout out to our editor. Or mislabeled Wonderland. He did a great job editing. I don't know if anybody saw the trailer. He made it where awesome. we're like Mortal Kombat characters going to fight each other and it cuts off. He did a great job with all that. I think he does a great job with the editing aspect. It's going to be really good. And I look, hope everybody enjoys it. And we got more stuff in, in store. Yeah. Say that name one more time. Mislabeled one. Is it Mis- mislabeled Wonderland? Mislabeled Wonderland. I saw the video. It's in, it's awesome. It's really, really good. So definitely hit them up if you want some good editing for sure. Probably going to be pretty busy after anybody sees that that post. It's it's pretty incredible. It's awesome. I saw that. So you uh, earlier you you kind of uh, went into you, you said you stated something about the amazing race. How was that experience? I've got an, like it looked. My parents are a huge huge fan of that show, and when y'all were on it, my dad got a hold of me and was like, "Isn't that the tight end you told me about?" I'm like, "Yeah." That's hysterical. I didn't, I didn't have an opportunity to watch it, but I, I wanted to, uh, I caught a couple clips and it's, it's pretty good. I think I saw y'all talking about getting into it. Like you were arguing with D'Angelo about just getting into the car and driving or the way that he was driving it or something. It looks hilarious. So <laughs> the amazing race what for me was an amazing experience because I enjoy traveling. I don't need certain amenities. I don't need certain things. I just like to see the world and obviously the competing aspect is is an awesome thing to do so i had a great time 
the way D was portrayed was not necessarily how things were. Right. D enjoyed everything from the start of the race to the end of the race. Now he hated everything in between where we went to hotels, couldn't leave house rooms, stuff like that. And not being able to talk to his family and kids. This was the first time. And since he's had a, uh, since he had his wife and his kids, he's not been able to talk to his kids at all for 30 straight days. Oof. Like he's never, he's never gone two days without talking to them. So this, that's a whole nother experience. And he, he wasn't prepared for that because he didn't really know what the ex- experience, what the experience was going to entail. Because the thing is, we talked about doing this, not even, talking about doing it we meant in passing we were in south africa visiting one of our buddies and we were he brought up amazing race somehow and he's like i was like d would you ever do that i said yeah i'd probably do that so you fast forward to july yeah we have an opportunity to be on it and i say hey d uh we have an opportunity we gotta make a video he's like what are you talking about like we talked about this in january well he gave me the (laughs) yes then and now he can't back out because he's a man of his word so he's stuck at that point so he had to do it and so now he's very hesitant on when he what he agrees to with me now because he doesn't want to <laughs> risk getting stuck doing something he doesn't want to do or doesn't know anything about but he enjoyed a lot of the stuff it's just there's some other stuff behind the scenes that he did not enjoy and that's what that's what soured him on the experience but i think he loved everything that dealt with the race the traveling and stuff like that he really enjoyed and just the way it came off looked bad, but that's not really how he felt in the time he was really pissed because of what just happened right. to us too. But I, like you said, it shows our dynamic though. Cause like one of the episodes, one of the scenes that wasn't really shown, it was on their YouTube. They show like our like other interviews that didn't make the show. One of them was us talking about negative reinforcement. So everybody talks about positive reinforcement. Well, me and D use negative. We talk each other down to make them perform better. And it, it lifts them up. If we gave positive stuff, they think we're fake and joking. So it doesn't work for us. So we talk about negative reinforcement, which nobody else can really do that because you have to have that type of, type of dynamic with somebody. And we do. So it works for us, but it doesn't work for most people. But for us, all we do is rip on each other, talk each other down, and then it helps us elevate ourselves. Right. But you mentioned the... You mentioned the driving aspect, the whole thing with that. So that was actually on the episode. We were supposed to follow one of the teams. We had talked to them ahead to, hey, we're going to follow them, make sure we know where we're going. Mm. And he's like, and he got out in front of them and they went a different way than we did. And we got lost for 30 minutes. So I was frustrated because yeah. we had a plan to follow them. They were going to wait for us and let us follow. And he left them and it screwed us. And we were behind 30 minutes. So mm-hmm. I was a little frustrated. And at that point, he was already done. He's like, oh, I don't know, it's whatever. And he started singing. And then I was, I knew he was checked out. So, but everything turned out all right. So it was good. It was entertaining for TV for sure. Yeah, very entertaining. I've seen a few of the clips and I, I, wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to try and see if I could find the whole season. Uh, you also, you've been on TV a couple more times. You were on Total Divas, right? You I, I, did, I, did, I did an episode on Total Divas. That is correct. Yeah. Wasn't a love connection there? Uh, it, so it's it's different. It is a different type of experience. Yeah. They, for I went on two dates and they were like two and a half, half hours and it got compressed in like four minutes, five minutes. So yeah. half of what's said, the way they edit things, it's completely different than the way you see things. Because I was getting hated on because one of my scenes, the girl was saying she she has a list of things guys got to pass and all this kind of stuff. And then it cuts to me looking and then it cuts to me saying, asking for the check, like right after it. <laughs> so the way they cut it may look like I'm asking for a check. And then the next scene's me on a date with somebody else. Right. So I got so much hate, but people don't understand how editing works in reality television. Seriously. A lot of people think reality television is actually real it's not <laughs> but that, it's all right uh, it's it was something different to try and i was like hey why not if i had the opportunity i'm a big wrestling guy so why yeah not? yeah that'd be a blast man uh you also were on impact wrestling i did d'angelo did a wrestling match uh yeah. i was in i was i was ringside i was like i guess i guess you'd call him manager i guess yeah. him and moose uh d'angelo did a really good job i don't like saying that because it's positive and i can't do that but he did redeem himself by missing the in 
off the table, off the top ropes. He missed his landing, so I can give him a hard time about that still. But no, it, it was a good job. He did a good job with it. He he did not give me any insight on anything that was going to happen oh, when he was cool. training for it. So everything was, I saw it all with fresh eyes, just like everybody else did. And I thought he did a good job. And it was something that he always said. He always his uncle would went to WrestleMania with us a lot. And his uncle was a huge wrestling fan. And he always told his uncle, if I have an opportunity, I would, I would wrestle one match because you're a huge fan. And his uncle passed away like two years or a year and a half before his wrestling match. So like this was where he had the opportunity to do it. So yeah. I think this was more like an ode to his uncle. And I think that's an awesome thing. A lot of people don't know that, but that's something that D's cl- very close to his family. And he's like that. Same with like the breast cancer. A lot of people don't know the pink in the NFL started because of D'Angelo. Is that right? I know the hair. I remember him. Yeah. Uh, the co- the color of his hair changing during the uh, the what is it? Crucial catch that they would. Yeah. Win so the whole really? thing, his he lost four aunts and his mother to breast cancer, and while his mom was still alive with with everything, he had approached the NFL about doing something for breast cancer for the month of October, and that's when wow. everybody started wearing the pink and everything like that. That's when it first started was because D'Angelo approached. And obviously at that time, D'Angelo was a huge name. So of course they want one of their stars if they're promoting it. And that's something that's truly D'Angelo still to this day is doing stuff for breast cancer every year. He has a foundation, he does stuff. And he's always, that's, he's a pillar in the community for breast cancer. And he's trying to get that thing eradicated. That's incredible. I did not know that. I, I knew that he was, he was a big, like he, he was, um, he, he definitely, uh, uh, he was a proponent for it. And like, you know, how, how he would push, you know, cancer awareness and, and breast cancer awareness and stuff like I saw that a lot. I had no idea that he was the one who started in the, yep. oh, that's, he that's is. awesome. That's really cool, man. That's awesome. I did, when you're talking about wrestling, I, um, I was a, I was a pro wrestler for about 10 years in like the indie circuit and stuff. So like when, uh, what, when, know, when, when did you do it? It was, man, I feel old now. I was in my twenties at that point. It was, uh, Oh, 2006 to about 2016 did yeah. you ever get go to aiw i did in ohio because mm-hmm. i went to a bunch of their house shows i went to a bunch of their shows when i was in cleveland yeah i, I did i did a couple i did a little bit of training there um did um a lot of stuff in texas like sean okay. michaels or sean Hagenbottom and booker mm-hmm. t and went and worked with uh their organization and stuff down there and, and did a lot of that stuff it was a lot of fun started off with like you know like 25 people in a in a in a warehouse and then built up a little bit it was it was a blast that's i, I really i miss it sometimes I, I that, that's awesome because I, I went to uh, aew or aiw a lot in ohio and that's where i saw i met johnny gargano when he was wrestling there oh, cool, brent baker yeah. was wrestling there so a bunch of people that were wrestling there terry smothers r.i.p he was wrestling there. All these people were wrestling there, and then they got to move on. Same with uh, Can- uh, Johnny Gargano's wife, Candice. She was wrestling there, too. So I met all of them at That's AIW cool. in Ohio. That's cool, man. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been there. It's, it's, it was a lot of fun. It was really tough, man. It was when uh, – so my hat's off to D'Angelo. The way, like, I, I saw – some clips and it's he did really well like that's a lot of training that you got he, go he trained for two days really yeah for that match he did two days of training in, in canada and he took bumps <laughs> really well like that's impressive well and so the funny thing so the thing is like me and him we've taken bumps to each other it's so like like we had a running joke that uh, afwb like every afwb one of us gets to do a finisher to the other and it's not really planned. It's like I've RKO'd him out in the grass. He just goes with it. We've done Sweet Chin Music. We've done Sister Abigail. We've done all of these different things. And then I actually have a wrestling ring in my a garage. So, like, we've put on a wrestling match that it will be coming at some point on the YouTube. So, we actually have a wrestling match against each other. We're going to oh. do a three-part series of that. We have one already done. So, that will eventually come in the future. We haven't posted it yet, but we have it prepared. So just know that will be coming. We do have, I do it. So I have a wrestling ring. So we actually do mess around a little bit. We're big wrestling fans, but I would say nothing to the level of like actual doing matches in front of people. That was his first big experience of that. Man. Yeah. I would definitely say y'all are fans. If you have a ring. 
Yeah. Like that's <laughs> <laughs> I know I've never known anybody to have an actual wrestling ring. <laughs> it's just it, it's more of just to get in there and mess around and have fun. Like obviously, like they always say don't do this at home, but like me and D have an understanding of how things are done. Yeah. Like yeah. we've seen it, like we're not gonna do anything that's like we're not jumping off the top ropes and doing a frog splash on somebody. That's we're not taking those bumps. We're just not doing that. We'll do a normal suplex, we'll do a hip toss. We'll do that type of stuff. We're not going to do the crazy, stupid things that we know we're not trained for. We can do the easy stuff. It's so funny that you say it's easy because when you learn it and, and you practice it and practice it and practice it, it becomes, you know, just second nature to someone who's been training. But like, if, if you're watching, you're like, how the hell do they do that stuff? But like, yeah, they, no, there's some of the stuff we would never even attempt. Like we stick to the more basic stuff. Uh, we're not really trying the crazy stuff because we're not trying to take bumps. Again, we played football. Our bodies have already been through pain. We're not trying to put it through more. And wrestling is pain on the body. People Thank don't you. realize that. Thank you. A lot of people are like, man, how fake is that? I was like, trust me, man. It's <laughs> it's not fit. Look, it's a lot of it, I'll admit, is predetermined. They don't tell people about it because it's what they call kfa, which I'm sure Correct. you know. And, it, you know, it, it, it's predetermined. But how you get there, it's incredible. It's a dance. The way that these guys can actually communicate with each other by talking or movements and stuff. Like I, I trained with uh, the undertaker in Texas before, like he kind of showed me a few things. Cause I'm a, I'm a, I'm a six, six guy back in the day. I was like 280. I was a bigger guy. They were pushing me more as a bigger guy, but I just got to meet him and work with him a little bit. And he was telling me how to lock up and, and communicate and then be able to eventually run your own matches. And man, it's when you have somebody in there that that's, that's that good of a worker who can basically take care of you. Cause that's the main thing. You take mm -hmm. care of the other guy and you take care of yourself. You throw yourself, all that stuff. It's, it's, it's an amazing, amazing feat to me. Like no people, nobody really understands that you have to be extremely athletic and you have to have a brain that is, I mean, quick. So football players fit in real fast. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that people don't realize that a wrestling ring, you're wrestling on long pieces of wood that is that is held up by steel beams, and then you have a mat that's this thick, and that is it. People don't realize that. Yes, it has give, it has a little bounce, but it still hurts. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> God, it hurts. They can bump. <laughs> like I've tried to explain. Like I've tried to get so our fantasy football from my 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 league. The loser, the last two places have to do a wrestling match in my ring. So what I tell, and I said, I'll choreograph the match for you, and they do very generic stuff. We had to postpone the first match, the first one, because the people, they're not, they're not, they don't ever play football. They're athletic, but not super athletic. They can't figure out how to take a bump, how to fall on their back correctly. And I'm not going to have them hurt themselves. Sure. So we've had to delay so I can work on them how to fall correctly on their back. <laughs> so it is uh, – I've actually brought in a, a bed mattress for them to practice falling on because that's – you don't feel anything if you land on that, but they're right. still struggling with that because right. you're basically just giving up. Hey, I'm just going to fall straight on my back and tuck my chin. That's all you do really, but people yeah. don't – it's not a natural thing to do. Right. So right. people don't understand and they're scared they're going to hurt themselves. No, nope. right. wide, tuck chin, and land. On the, you want to land shoulder blades first. Feet flat, <laughs> slap your hands if you can, yep. bring your knees up into the mind. Yeah. And but I'll have guys to land too far, they won't land far enough. I'm like, come on, guys, this is this is the first step. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man. I can sit here and talk about this for hours. Seriously. That is that's gotta be the best punishment for the losers in fantasy football. That's and they all agree to it, so <laughs> Man, I would get <laughs> when it, my my and after this we'll we'll move on. But I, I had to run so much so I wouldn't get gassed. And I was like, oh, I was about to play basketball, no big deal, running back and forth. And no, it is a completely different animal when you're hitting those ropes. People don't understand; those are tightly wound wires underneath, like steel almost tape. Steel. Yeah, steel. Yep. <laughs> you hit them, and they leave those welts on your back and stuff. You learn how to lean in, and say, it's it's it was. It's an art. It's definitely it is. It is a lot harder than people think it is by just watching. People don't really realize how much work goes into wrestling and learning how to do it and doing it properly. Exactly. And entertaining. Mm -hmm. It was man, I, I miss it so much. Talking to you about it now, I miss it even more. Um, but 
you you uh, mentioned your fantasy football league. That's how I got started with my show. I started off with the uh, fantasy football plug podcast and um, kind of grew into this and uh, been real blessed being able to talk to you know people like you and players like you. Which I again I, I can't thank you enough for being on the show, man. This has been a blast. Um, I always want to get you actually pay, play fantasy football, so obviously you don't have terrible thoughts about fantasy football or anything really bad to say. Uh, so, opinions. so fantasy football, it's entertaining to do. I'll play it, but like, I'm not obsessed like other people are. <laughs> cause well, cause the reason why I say it though, is like, I'm never, would never be, cause I've played it obviously. So I know how it is. I would never be a person that gets mad at a player because they don't put up points because you don't understand that. Like you might not know what the game plan is. Like, cause I've experienced this. I got after, my 2015 season, my 2016 season, we had a new coach, new offense, everything, new quarterback. I had seven quarterbacks that year throw to me, and people were giving me crap. I still had 500 or 600 yards receiving, a top 10 tight end in the NFL, and I'm getting hate on because I didn't put on 1,000 yards. But it, it my opportunities shrank because of the way our system was. I'd get zero points and people coming at me saying, oh, they should have killed you instead of Harambe, stuff like that that doesn't bother me. Like it's never going to bother me. But the thing that bothered me was my little cousins, my mom, my family sees that and that that upsets them. It's never going to bother me, but sure, the, I'm like sorry, that man. type. Oh, it's all right. No, but that's the thing is like, there are people like that. And did you don't understand? Like I might not even had a target thrown to me and that has nothing to do with me. It has to do with the game plan. Right. And people don't understand that a game plan changes each week. Some sure. guys might not be targeted or they might get double teamed and not get a target. Like you'll see with Julio Jones, DeAndre Hopkins, they'll get double teamed. Tyree Kill, you get seven points and you're mad at him. Well, he's doing everything he can, but people don't understand that because there it's a it's all about me world right. of fantasy. So if you don't get me points, you suck. And I think right. that's the that's a negative part of fantasy that players hate because they don't like having to deal with if there wasn't social media, it wouldn't be an issue. Right. Exactly. Tagging them and coming at them for stuff that they have no control over, or you didn't even watch the game and see why he didn't put up any points. It makes it a little difficult. Like, so I play it, I enjoy it, but I don't get to that level. Like I, I think it's serious, but I'm never going to like, Oh, go after somebody because I know how it is. Like I understand the inner workings of it. Sure. It's, it's just, man. And one of my questions was, what's the worst thing you've heard? That, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it was hilarious. I, get, so I, I even said, that was great. But it, like, it, like, it was a great line to say. But like my 13-year-old my, my niece, she has no idea. Right. Her little cousin has no idea what that means. Right. Why are you saying he needs to die? Like that's yeah. how they take it. <clears throat> and that's upsetting. Like that upsets them. Of course. And now I have to deal with that. Right. Right, and if, if the guy's being a serious, if, if, the, if the guy's being serious, he's a prick. He, Correct. That that just, I've never heard anything that brutal like that. Oh yeah, no, it's. <laughs> I was, and it, I love hearing that like players or former players actually play fantasy. Like I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember um, the way that Arian Foster <laughs> handled fantasy football before. I don't. He man, okay. He was the first one basically to come out and saying like, I don't give a about your fantasy team I'm yeah out there or whatever and he would troll people on twitter with like pictures of broken femurs and stuff like that <laughs> and uh i spoke to him he's a friend of the show uh and he finally started playing and now he's like you know what i kind of realize why people enjoy it it's a it's a lot of fun and you get kind of you get into it but yeah if something i can't stand is when people go after players because they're injured or like you said, they're, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're different schemes. Like, okay. You're saying like Deandre Hopkins getting doubled or something. They're going to use that to their advantage. The team's going to aim for like a Christian Kirk or a Rondell Moore or whomever Correct. else and, and use that. So the, the wide receiver Hopkins is doing just as much for his team as if he were actually catching passes and, and getting down the field, he's helping his team any way that he can. So people need to understand that real football is more important to football players than fantasy football. It's Correct. The, the teams don't care about your fantasy team. They don't. Because it, a lot of it, though, like a lot of it is a lot of people nowadays, they don't watch the games. They just watch red zone or highlights 
to see if their guys or, or study their thing to see, oh, did my guy get points? They don't know why they didn't put points up. They don't know why they put points up. So, yeah. like, they have no idea. They're just looking at the stats versus mm-hmm. the actual the game. And there's so many other factors that go into it. Big time. And that's, that's one thing that's made me, I think, decent at the game to where I can do what I'm doing and all that. And it's is because I care about actual football. Mm-hmm. And I, I fell in love with the game. Fantasy football actually made me fall in love more with football and pay attention to players and the way that they're, you know, uh, defensive ski, like the way players are lining up, all just different things. I watched that stuff and I kind of studied it and I just, I fell in love with the game even more. But yeah, you're right. People will just throw on red zone or something, just pay attention to who, like yep. what they're doing individually and not actually pay attention to the, the like- beauty and the art of football. I would hate to see what Chris McCaffrey's getting right now. The hate he's getting because, you know, he was the number one pick for 99% of the league and he's played two weeks this year. Yeah. This second year in a row. Mm -hmm. Like, so I'm sure he's getting a lot of hate, but like he has no control over an injury. Like he's not trying to get hurt and people just don't care. That's, and that's why I've always said social media is the root of all evil because of that. There's no filter. There's no repercussions for what anybody says on social media. Yeah. And you're given a mouth to go after whoever you want without any repercussions. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, Big Gary, uh, that's all I've got for you, man. I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. This is oh, no problem. Blast. It's been a no blast, problem. I had a good time. And always, it's, it's, these things are easy. It's fun. It's fun to talk. Hey, so that's what we do. Is what I do with D'Angelo. It'd be the same type of thing on cinnamon and sugar. Hey, we're just ask questions and talk. Absolutely. Yeah. Make it like easy, laid back. Yeah. This is great, man. This is awesome. So, it, just like you were saying, cinnamon and sugar, y'all go subscribe, follow. I'm, I'm terrible with social media stuff, but I've, I've gone and I've, I've started following on um, all major platforms. I saw it on, you're on Spotify, Apple, uh, Google Play, YouTube, Google Play, everything. all of them. Whether we, put, follow, we put subscribe, the. Yeah, we put the podcast on uh, the video of the podcast on YouTube and then the audio is on Spotify, Google Play, Podbean, Apple, wherever you want it, it's on there. Yeah, go subscribe, follow all that stuff, guys. Go stream it. It's a phenomenal show. It, they talk about everything. It's it's a blast. It's two buddies sitting down, giving their opinions, and it's cinnamon and sugar. Y'all fit together just, just right, man. So <laughs> it was a blast, man. Thanks so much for being on the show, buddy. And uh, hopefully we'll get you back on again, all right? All right, no problem. Thank you. All right, man.